week. Uh, maybe next class I teach you will be in a little bit more restricted clothing. But I thought for this week, you know, people are dressed casually sometimes too. Same format as prior weeks. We're going to have four groups, three exercises in each group, 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, sort of 10 seconds transition time, more like it. Three rounds, and each group is a snack. And what I mean by that is you could do the full movement for mood class. That'd be more like your exercise for the day. Maybe that'd be your that'd be your meal. Or you could break it into four little snacks to do throughout your day based on your time allotment. Without further ado, we'll get right into it. Our first group is mobility. And you can just join me as we go through this. Uh, we're going to start with triangle rotation. So I'm starting with my right hand on a chair, right leg forward, left hand on the inside of my left knee. We're getting the timer started. And then what we're doing is we're rotating up, opening up. Halfway through, we'll switch sides and just track your hand with your eyes. One more, we'll switch. So go ahead and switch. Ready to get opening that way. And take some nice deep breaths. All right. So our next is our hip hinge with our side lean. And for this, we're just going to stand nice and tall, push our hips back, crawl our hands in front of our legs, slowly stand up, pushing the hips forward. I'm going to pull back on my left fingers, arms overhead, push my hips to the right, lean to the left, push my hips to the left, lean to the right. We'll probably get one more of those. So I push my hips back. I crawl my hands in front of my legs. Feel a stretch in the back of my legs. Pull back on my right fingers this time. Arms overhead, hips to the right, lean to the left. Hips to the left, lean to the right. Okay, our next is our alternating crescent step. So the big one with this is that when we take our step forward, we're going to push our hips forward. So you see, I push my hips forward. I feel that in the trail leg hip. And then I lift my arms up into my ears and I switch. So straight leg, then I push my hips forward. I feel a stretch right there. And we're just alternating, moving on through. Nice, big deep breaths. Nice, beautiful sunny day out today. You know, sometimes that's all you need for your mood is some time outside. So that's round one. And on round two, we'll just go right into our triangle rotations, turning and opening up. If you have the opportunity to do this outside, you know, it's a, it's a great way to add movement into your day. It's a great way to make yourself feel better. So science, you know, the science is Certainly out there on you know how how sunlight can improve your mood, but nature as well has many uh, many mood boosting properties. Okay, and we're done there. Our hip hinge with side lean is next. So again, the first thing I do is I get my booty out of the way. I push my hips back, draw my hands down my legs, pull back on those left fingers. Arms are in line. My ears here. As I push my hips to the side, we'll lean to the opposite side. We usually get two of those in in 30 seconds. Again, pull it back to my right. Arms in line with my ears. Move it through. Okay, alternating crescent steps on the 10. So I step forward. I push my hips forward so I'm nice and tall. Arms in line with my ears. Just see it from this side. You really want to stretch out those hips, right? Especially if you're seated for a good chunk of your day, whether it's driving, whether it's because you're stuck at the desk. We want to make sure that we're stretching out that hip. And you can see that here, right? When we're seated, my leg is up like this. So this is the opposite of that, right? Excellent. All right, it brings us to our last round. We'll just go right into those triangle rotations. 
mobility's not too bad to move one into the next. It's not too strenuous, but anytime you need to take a break, you just take that break. If you want to pause the video, you can pause the video. And we'll switch sides. I really like these triangle rotations, and if you're a golfer, I'm sure you're a little sad right now with the golf course that's being closed. Uh, but you can practice your mobility in the meantime, and this is a great exercise for golfers. Okay. Hip hinge with side lean. So again, I push my hips back. Draw my hands in front of my legs. I pull back on those left fingers. My arms are overhead. Take that time. When I do the side lean, I really feel it in my lats. And one more. And then I just get that added benefit of stretching out those forearm muscles by pulling back on those fingers. We have a little extra time so we can just get a little extra twist in there before we step into our alternating crescent lunges. We sort of went without a break on this, but that's okay. Take a break if you need to. If not, feel free to join me as I take that exaggerated step forward. I then push my hips forward, bring my arms in line with my ears, thumbs pointed back. Taking some nice deep breaths. All right, excellent. So I certainly went over time on that mobility section. Uh, actually, no, I didn't. It's supposed to be six minutes. We're going a little bit longer um, this week. So in our group two, we have our cardio section. So for this, you can hop, you can step, you can do whatever intensity you need. Our cross hop, we're just going to imagine an imaginary T or plus sign, I should say, that we're hopping around or that we're stepping around. All right, so we'll get started with that in three, two, and one. I'm going to start with just stepping. So I'm imagining this T and I'm going as fast or as slow as I want. The timer didn't start there. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. And we are on round one. Sometimes things don't work out like you'd like to, but that's okay. We're stepping through. Halfway through, I'm going to switch directions. Not that I get any benefit from it from working muscles equally, more so that my brain is working throughout this. Excellent. All right, our front and back crawl, just as the name suggests, we're going to get a slight hinge forward, and I'm just going to swim. All right? So at the halfway mark, we'll switch into our back crawl. We go as fast or slow as you'd like. Back. I actually did do an extra group. Uh, so we're just going through two rounds. So the mobility section was a little bit longer, which is okay. All right, and then last but not least, we're just marching. And notice when I move, it's off arm, opposite leg, and I could certainly pick up my pace if I want to be more of a high knee cardio. But, you know, this isn't designed to get you swole, get your, you know, beach body ready. This is just designed to add a little bit of movement into your day so that you can feel better, your mood can be improved. All right, and then we'll go into our cross hop on the two minute mark and I'll hop this time. I find it's easier to have shoes on if you're hopping. I'm not electing for that today. And I take my time, right? I get set up so that when I hop, I'm always square. 
I always have these nice soft landings. Halfway through, I switch my direction. And I could certainly go quicker, but again, I'm just moving around so I feel better. All right, front and back crawl. If you find the hinge forward difficult on this, you can just sort of lean forward slightly. You can stay standing. You know, I like the hinge forward, just provides that little bit of extra challenge. And we can go backwards. I can feel a lot of different muscles activating when I'm doing this. Feels really nice to go backwards, open up that chest. And our march. Opposite arm, opposite leg. I get my arms moving. You know, it might be dramatic with the arm swing, with the knees all the way up. But it just feels good to move my muscles and patterns that are completely opposite to sitting, right? Being a little bit more exaggerated with my movement rather than being stationary. Okay, and that is our cardio section. So for the strength section, we need a sturdy surface, like a like a sturdy chair. So our inclined shoulder taps. So for this, you're just going to get a nice strong plank, incline plank position, and you're going to alternate touching your shoulder with opposite hand. And we'll just go jump right into it in three, two, and one. So we're going to go through three rounds. Nice strong. Plank position. A nice straight line too, right? Nice straight line from shoulder, chest. If you have difficulty with this, you know, you can increase your incline by using a couch, using a wall. The further away you are from parallel and closer you are to perpendicular, the easier this will be. So next is our chair squat. I like the chair squat because it teaches people how to squat, right? We're going to push our butts back like we're sitting in a chair. We're going to gently touch our bottoms to the chair, and we're going to stand up. And the whole time, I want you to focus on having your chest up and lifted. I like to uh, think about, you know, holding, holding the baby, right? You hold the baby, you keep the chest up when you sit down. You don't get to use your arms to help you stand up. You just have to chair squat. Next is our chair dip. Probably the most challenging of this all. I want you just to get your legs further than normal off the chair and then bring your butt off the chair. Slowly lower yourself to where you're comfortable while squeezing a beach ball behind your back with your elbows. And you can go to whatever range of motion you're comfortable. Maybe it's just holding it here. Maybe you're in a position or a, your ability level is just trying to hold it and you take breaks when you need to. Or maybe you're all the way down, all the way up and you're jamming through them. Meet yourself where you're at. Again, we're not trying to get you, you swole or jacked or sweaty. It's just to improve your mood. All right, incline shoulder taps. Again, I'm really in using my core here to keep myself stable. While we're doing this, we can practice our breathing, and maybe you're trying that first lip breathing when you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth like you're breathing through a straw. I find that one a great one to do while exercising, and we'll continue it into our chair squats. So I breathe in through my nose. Now as I stand up, out through that straw, in through my nose, out through that straw.
awesome. And we finish off with those chair dips. Oh, almost did incline shoulder tap again. And the chair dip. And if you want to make it harder, feet are extended. Feet are closer if you want to make it a little bit easier. But always try to squeeze that beach ball behind your back with your elbows. And that will really engage your triceps or the back of your arms. Again, just moving through that range of motion that you feel comfortable. If you need to use your legs to assist you up, that's fine too. Brings us to our last group, which is our stretch. We're actually going to start seated on that chair with our left leg crossed over our right and a slight lean forward. So this time we'll practice some square breathing. And normally we use a four count. But today, uh, I'm going to try bring it down to a three count and see if that's a little bit easier. And we'll get started with that on child's pose. But how the square works is it's in for three, hold for three, out for three, hold for three. All right, so we'll practice that through the child's pose, which is essentially we're going to grab a point on our chair, push our hips back, and lean into that. We'll start with our square breathing. In for three, two, three. Hold for three, two, three. Out for three, two, three. And hold for three, two, three. And I want you to try to continue practicing that square breathing throughout the rest of our stretch section where you're holding that, that three pattern, two pattern, could be four pattern. And we finish with our handcuff stretch. So I grab my wrist behind my back, bring my shoulders back and down. Nice proud chest. In for three. Hold. Out for three. Hold. In for three. And continue on. All right, and that's round one of our stretch. We go back into our seated pigeon. I'm sitting on the edge of my chair. I'm going to cross my left leg over my right, slightly forward. And I'm just breathing in that square pattern, or maybe you want to stick with the first lip pattern, or maybe you want to go with something a little simpler, and it's just you're focusing on your breath. You're taking nice, deep breaths. You know, everybody finds something that works a little bit better for them. Um, you can feel the sound of my voice. Oh, we should switch. We'll hold this a little longer. We'll switch. You might be a little distracted by the sound of my voice. Uh, just try to tune it out. Most people do. All right, and we'll go right into the chair child's pose. The rest doesn't, you know, matter too much on the stretch because it's not too intensive. If you do find it intensive, that's, there's no shame there. Just take your time. Right, and then slowly stand up as we finish with our handcuff stretch. Shoulders pulled back and down, just holding on to that wrist behind the back. And you can see how this is opposite from working at a desk or driving, you know, whatever you're doing where normally you're like this. This is the opposite of that. When we stretch, we generally want to reverse the motions that we're or positions that we hold so long in the day. And just by doing this, you know, for 30 seconds, two times, we've really uh, reduced our risk for injury. We'll feel better, we'll sleep better, uh, and overall we'll have less aches and pains. That is it for movement for mood six. Went a little bit over in that first group thinking I was doing three rounds, but that's okay. 
I then realized that six minutes was going to be way too long for each group. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to put them in the comments below or email me directly. Um, but with that, I will let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this class, and I hope you have a wonderful day.